afternoon, good morning everyone, and good evening, depending on what time of day you are watching this. I'm Robert Evans and this is The Pixel Show. And today, we are gonna have, uh, it's actually my very first time doing this. I've never done this before, but since everybody is so excited about this particular camera, if you know what it is, we are gonna do an unboxing video of the brand new A7S III and a little bonus unboxing today because I also just received the 12 to 24 2.8. Uh, so let's jump right in. We're gonna do the camera first. So here it is, still in the box, hence unboxing. So let's open it up. Um, I'm excited about this, you know, as most of you know, um, People have been waiting a long time for this. And just so you know, we're also gonna set it up in the menu. So I'm gonna take you through, show you how I would set up my cameras uh, and just do some basic menu talk. I'm not gonna really do a huge deep dive into the menu, but uh, you're gonna get to see it. It's an all brand new menu. So let's open this up. There we go, it's on its side. So of course, in the box, all the paperwork. Uh, some cords. So this is a, a looks like a HDMI mini. Uh, there's this thing. If you guys wonder like what this is, everyone's like, I get this, and you wonder what it is. Uh, this is so you can tether, you can tether the camera, and it holds the cord, so it holds the tether cords, uh, or anything you have plugged into the camera. So that's what that is for. Um, and then let's open it up, and of course you get the beautiful A7S III camera strap, which I don't use by the way, so I put it right back in the box, uh, as well as I'll put these paperwork back on the box and put it on your shelf. Such a great tip, don't ever get rid of your camera boxes because someday this will be old technology and you will want to sell it, and if you have all this stuff, it makes it worth a lot more money. Uh, so first, you get in, we get the battery charger. There should be a battery in here too. Uh, you get the plug for the battery charger. Put that back in there. But the battery is below the cord, which is usually where it is. And I was right, there it is. So, put the strap back in, but I definitely want the battery so that we can set up the camera. Actually, I have this battery, but I brought in a charged battery because I knew the one in the box. So let's keep that out. So we are ready to go. And of course, the moment everybody's been waiting for, of course you've all seen it already. But there she is, the new A7S III. I'm really excited about the menu system. Uh, of course, I've seen uh, when they announced it and they showed they put the all brand new menu system. Uh, so first, let us put the other stuff we're not gonna use back in the box. The warranties, the how-tos. Um, I'm gonna put this in here for now. See if I can close it. I can never make it as pretty as it was when it came. Close it down, put it up, and we'll put that right here at the front of the desk. So, see it? And the cameras are focused on me, so sorry, the box is going to be a little bit out of focus. We'll put the other accessories over here. We have our charged battery. Um, but the camera needs a lens on it, right? So, the bonus unboxing today of course now is the 12 to 24 2.8. So let's take this thing out of the box. Now some of you I know are gonna have the questions because I know when I posted a picture of it on social media, they said, how did you get that if this is your first time watching? I am a Sony artisan and uh, sometimes we get the equipment uh, a few weeks before. Um, we put in our order, we do pay for it, um, but of course we get perks. Um, so that's why I have it. I've had it for about uh, four or five days. It's actually been killing me because we haven't had time to shoot this. So I'm finally going to get it out and, and get to shoot it. And uh, of course we're going to do some videos and bring you some content uh, on the camera and of course the new lens. So here is 
comes in a nice case. Zips down the front. Now, I usually don't keep my lenses in the cases, so the same thing applies. Uh, it does have a little strap for the case, but I put the cases right back in the box and put those back on my shelf so that someday if I want to sell that, uh, because I actually do own the 12 to 24 F4, which I will probably sell now. Uh, so if you need an F4 12 to 24, you can shoot me up in the comments and maybe I'll sell it to you if it's not already gone. Oh, one more piece of plastic to put back in the box. I like to save all the original so that when I sell it, I can put it back in there. And when I bring it to the new seller or ship it to the new seller, it's there. So put that off to the side. I'll we'll lay that down so it doesn't block me. Okay, so let's just put the lens on the camera just to have one on it. Clicks right on. Nice big lens cap to protect that front element. And camera obviously won't turn on because there's no battery in it, but we're gonna put our charged battery here. And again, the new camera takes the new uh, Z batteries that last a lot longer than the old ones, which is awesome. Close it down, turn it on. And so now we need to set it up. So give me about two seconds. I am gonna connect the camera uh, via an HDMI cord right here. Okay, on. Yeah, we are on. Okay, so we're back. That took a little longer. Look, there's six, eight, and eight. You can see him in the camera. Zoom in on him. Boom. Um, so that took a little longer because I have, and I've done this before, uh, mini HDMI. Um, and I forgot that, of course, the new camera has regular HDMI in the side. So I just had to quickly switch cables so that we could uh, do that. All right. So let's go to the menu. So the first thing, I forget, I can't look at the back of the camera because I'm showing it to you, so I have to look at the monitor. <laughs> Um, so the first thing, it didn't ask me to do date and time. Why not? No, we can set that up. So as you can see, there's a new menu system. Um, the very first thing on the menu is, uh, the my menu setting, which is the star. And then you can customize, uh, your menus. So in other words, like, let's say you wanted to have one menu for shooting video, which many of you are going to use this to shoot video but you had another one to shoot stills, you can sort of set up, there's my menu one, uh, my menu two, hold on, I got off of it. Let me get back over there, go up to the top. So, keeps doing that. So there's my menu, so you wanna go over and then you can have different menu like my menu one, my menu two, so you might set up one for stills, you might set up two for video, you might set up three for anything else that you want. But uh, just really quickly, if you want to add an item to this, you would go add item. And then you just cycle through and whatever you want on your menu. So maybe the first thing you want is file format. And, and then you add that to my menu one, right? And I hit it and it added it. So that's kind of how you do that. I'm not going to dive super deep into this. Um, but then we go back over. Go back over, go back to the top, go back over. Sorry, it's a little different. You know, I'm used to looking at the back of the camera, so doing this on the monitor. Um, back to menu. There we go, add item. So anyway, that's how you would add item. You can delete the items, uh, et cetera. Your menu settings. So I'm gonna go back to the menu Okay, so image quality, let's go right here. So you push the middle button and file format. So if I were shooting video, there's all the video functions in here now. There's HVACHS, uh, HVACS, HVACSHD. And again, I'm not gonna dive into the different functions of what they do. Movie settings, uh, you know, you can set your frame rate here. 
uh, 30, 60, 24, 120. So that's one thing that everyone's excited about in this camera is it shoots 120 frames uh, a second uh, in slow-mo, which they haven't done before. Uh, this one, I believe it'll do it in uh, 8-bit, only in 8-bit, not in 10-bit, but the other ones will be in 10-bit. Um, so then all the other functions within here, proxy settings, uh, Super 35 is on auto. Now, just a side note, maybe we'll get into this. I set this up on my cameras, especially when I shoot sports, so that I can push the side button on the G Master lenses here, and my cameras will jump to Super 35. So it's really nice uh, when you're shooting something tight and you want to punch in a little tighter. Of course, what that does is it uses a little bit smaller part of the sensor, so the file's not quite as big, uh, you know, but I usually do that on my A9. Uh, sometimes on my A7R4. Okay, so let's, let's go back. So image, uh, image quality, so we just, uh, sorry, so media. Uh, so now you can set your media formats like how you wanna record it. Um, so you can prioritize, so this is when you're shooting, the cameras have uh, two slots on the side of them for your media cards. And of course, uh, this camera has a brand new media card. You can use SD cards, and uh, now they have the new media card, which is a little bit bigger, uh, that'll go in size, especially so when you're shooting, uh, you know, video at, at the highest quality, it records to the camera much faster. Uh, but again, I wanna show you just kinda how to set it up. So prioritize media settings, slot one, it'll record to first, is how that's set up. Uh, recording mode, which now here you can decide how you want to, do you want to just be standard where it only records to one card, uh, where it simultaneously records to uh, stills to two cards. Um, here this setting would be record JPEG to one, card to the other. I usually set mine up so that it records simultaneously uh, and, it re and I record raw to both cards, so one as a backup. Um, Auto switch is if you want to shoot to one card and then to the other, it'll switch to the second card. Okay, so let's go backwards. All right, now your file, file settings. Uh, so now here's something that, this is how I customize my camera. So uh, file series. So I like to set it up in a series so that it doesn't reset. That way it'll go one to 10,000 or whatever the camera goes up to. Um, but if you want to reset your counter, you can do that. So for maybe for each job, you want to start at one instead of the, you know, you shot a wedding or whatever it was and you, you know, the last file you shot was 3,698. You can always set it back to one so that your raw files are numbered one to whatever. Um, file format standard. Um, I like to do uh, date and title. So I set that to that, and then uh, title name settings. So you can name this whatever you want. So that's title settings, that's what that is. We're gonna go back to the menu. All right, shooting mode. So now all in here is your exposure mode. So if you were to exposure, you want manual, do you want uh, auto, do you want program, aperture priority, shutter priority? Of course you can do this in the function button, so. Uh, you don't necessarily have to set it up right here. Um, exposure control. Uh, P, I'm not 100% sure on what that is because this is new to me. This, some of the stuff in the menu is new. Um, camera set memory. Uh, so I think it, you can set up different uh, functions here too. Memory, so like if you had multiple photographers using, you know, one photographer could use settings one. So once you set it all up and then you set it as a memory function, uh, you know, camera photographer one, like uh, he's in memory function one, camera two, and or you can also set this up for, here's my settings for video, here's my settings for stills, that type of thing. So let's go backwards, back to the menu. Uh, memory recall, slot one, so this is basically uh, media recall, sorry, where the camera's showing you the files from. So if you're duplicating them, it doesn't really matter, 
but if you uh, having something go to slot one and something to slot two, it just depends on where you want to see the files from. Okay, uh, so then we have silent shutter. Uh, so you can turn this on or off in here. Um, silent mode on, silent mode off. Target function settings, this is new. Aperture drive AF. Uh, so again, I'm not gonna go too deep into that. Uh, release without lens, enable. Um, I think this is so you can, uh, I'm not sure what this does. So you can't shoot without the lens on, I think. And let's get back in there. Uh, audio recording. So now you have the whole audio recording, a uh, lot more adjustments uh, for video, of course. Uh, you have your, it is recording, so you want to make sure that's on. Uh, what level do you want it at? Uh, it's kind of high, you use the dial to turn that up and down. Um, uh, audio timeout, 6, 8, and 8, what's that? Live or lip sync, so uh, if you're shooting live video or maybe if somebody's lip syncing, it makes it a little bit easier editing afterwards, am I correct? Correct. Look at that, me, I'm just guessing at that one. <laughs> Wind noise on or off if you want to adjust that. And then audio level displays, so this will show on the back of your screen whether you want it on. So it's a good idea to have that on so that you know that it's recording. Uh, TC-UB, this is all time code stuff that is uh, sort of a little bit beyond my pay grade, but it's where you can uh, set the time code to where you want it to start, stop, what format you want the time code in, um, you know, that type of stuff. So a little bit more for uh, video functions of the camera. Um, and that is the other thing which I'll show you, but um, the camera has two menus now so that you can, uh, it will show you some of the functions of course in shoot mode, but if you're in video mode, it'll gray out a lot of the shooting functions and vice versa. Okay. Let's go back down. So exposure. Uh, so this is again where you're setting up your slow shutter, your ISO, your ISO range. Uh, just I'll quickly touch on that. So the ISO range is right now set up to ISO 40 to uh, 409,600. If you didn't want it to go that high, um, you could adjust that. Uh, and then I go... Yeah, up or down. And the reason you do this, if you had it set to auto, auto ISO and the camera would uh, only go between, so if you didn't want it on, if you had it on auto ISO and you didn't want the camera to go higher than a certain level, that's why you would use this. Okay, uh, auto manual. So that's grayed out. That's for, uh, I don't know what that's for. Do you know what that's for, Nate? I do not. Okay. We don't know what that's for. Exposure compensation, plus or minus, metering. Uh, you can set it up for face priority, how you want the wide zone, all those things, which is also in the function menu. White balance, which is also in the function menu. Uh, color tones uh, and zebra displays also can be accessed through the function menu. So uh, AF and MF, manual focus, autofocus. Also, these can be adjusted through the focus menu. Uh, the autofocus transition speed, like how fast you want the camera to react. So you can change it there. Um, and how responsive it is as well. So uh, if you can shoot sports or something, you probably want it really responsive. If not, you don't want it. Uh, too responsive. It's, it's, again, it's a personal preference thing. Your focus areas, uh, wide, narrow. I autofocus, so here you can set it up to um, right eye, left eye, let the camera choose. Focus assist, this will zoom the camera in uh, to magnify to get an exact focus. Now I don't like this on when I'm shooting stills, but this is very helpful in video. 
uh, if you want to like actually zoom in on an eye. As a matter of fact, as we were setting up the show, we have to focus the cameras for the show and I use older Sonys that don't have eye autofocus in them. Uh, I think I have an A7S II, maybe even a one. And so uh, Nate used that to zoom into my eye to focus. So that's what that's for. Focus peaking, now this is something that I really like. I keep focus peaking on because I shoot manual a lot. And focus peaking, uh, you can decide the level of how much you wanna see, but basically it's kind of like zebra stripes, but it shows you where the camera's focused. Uh, I keep it on mid, usually myself. And then you can also choose a color. So it could be white, it could be blue, it could be yellow. Uh, I tend to gravitate in like red, so I'll set mine to red. Um, and so these are all playback. Um, so select media to playback, like what slot again from magnification, how much you, like if you hit the zoom button on the camera, how much you actually want it to zoom into the photo, you can set that up. Uh, you can select it to rate, you can delete and delete confirm. Um, I would here on delete confirm just as a little tip. Uh, it'll say cancel first, meaning that it'll give you a warning. Say, are you sure you want to delete? It's always a good idea to have that on. Uh, edit, uh, things you can do. I don't use this too much. Uh, viewing, uh, let's see, playback speed. I think that's how many images that it shows you when you spin the dial. Not 100% positive on that. And different playback options. Uh, again, I'm shooting more stills with this, but we do. So this is all uh, network stuff transferred to your smartphone. Again, this stuff's all available uh, on the function menu, which I like. Um, Transfer FTP. Now this is stuff that's newer in these cameras that I haven't played around a little bit with yet. So maybe we'll do some future videos uh, and dig a little bit deeper into this once I understand it a little more. Because again, you have to remember, even as an artisan, like I haven't had a chance to play with this camera yet. This is the first time it's been in my hands. Location setting. Uh, this is important um, if you want to uh, Turn your Bluetooth on if you if you want to be able to know where the pictures were and then that shows up. Um, and you can also uh, area adjust where you set up your actual time zone. I don't know what I just did. Cancel it. But this is usually done under the setup where we went right into the menu, so it kind of bypassed the time. Here's where you pair with your Bluetooth. Uh, you can pair to your phone uh, and you can use the, uh, the app, the Sony app to even control your camera, to send images back and forth. Uh, again, this is more like wired uh, settings when you have the camera connected and networking stuff that I'm not 100% familiar with. and then area and date. Okay, so here we can set up date and time, area setting. So this is important just to keep it. So uh, we are in the central time zone, so I'm gonna set it to central. Uh, daylight savings on or off. Uh, again, it's a personal preference if you want. Like I travel a lot, so I'm constantly changing my time, so it's not really that critical. I always just make sure before my shoots that my cameras are set up to the exact time, which would also mean going back and if I went to New York, making sure that it's on the New York setting. Uh, so date and time, we are currently shooting this episode on uh, September 22, Nate? Is it today 22? I believe so, yeah. September. Let's go the other way, 2-2, two, two. Nate's doing the Apple check. September 22, we have a winner. Okay, and the exact time of day of filming, Nate? 10.06. 10.06 in the morning, we're up and go-getters. Well, 
Nate is. I'm not. But we're working around Nate's schedule. So we're filming at 10.06 in the morning. And wow, they finally added a seconds. This is awesome. Let's just call it 25 because that's okay. No, I never said okay, did I? Yeah, I got to go down to... Oh, I guess it doesn't let me down to. Okay, so I put the middle button. And then this is how you set up your formatting. And this is new, this is nice. So it shows me Chicago, Mexico City, the time zone. It shows me uh, the date and the time and the seconds and uh, that we are on uh, GMT. What is it? Grand Mountain. It's the big clock, the big giant clock. <laughs> and of course, this is your PAL NTSC selector. We are NTSC because we are in the United States. Uh, you'd set it to PAL, I guess, if you're recording it for uh, Europe and other places like that. Here's a new function where you can actually save all your settings to your camera to an SD card. So let's say uh, you needed to send it in to get cleaned, uh, whatever, to the factory. Well, they will reset your camera back to factory settings. So when you get it back, then you'll have to sit on the couch and spend an hour doing this. So now, uh, if you save it to those cards, you don't have to do that. Uh, so operation, this is where you can set your custom keys. Uh, so in other words, you go in here. And so now here's all the different buttons on the camera, which is super nice, right? Uh, there's the wheel, the uh, AE hold button, the AF off button. And look at, they light up and show you right where they are. And then you can, so let's say on my, uh, oh, here, let's show you like what I do. Uh, focus, not set, drive mode, ISO. So those are all set to those things right now. Um, movie shooting on that button, focus area. Uh, focus hold. So focus hold button, let's just set this up because this is how I use my camera. So if I push now on the middle of the dial, focus hold, uh, now that's set up to that button. But, but, and that's actually not what I wanted to show you, but that's all right. That's where it's set. Um, custom key settings. Maybe this is what I want. So if I scroll through here, and I get to the focus hold button. Right there. And I hit that custom. Now when I go through the menu, and then I have to find it. So I like to set this to, there it is, ASP Super 35. So when I push that button, now it's set to, uh, you know, wouldn't be as, uh, functional on a wide lens like this, but on my 135 1.8, on my 70 to 200 2 g Master, on my 100 to 400, all those lenses that I shoot sports and stuff with, when I push that button, it punches in a little bit further, it uses a little bit less of the sensor, and I get a little bit more range on that particular lens without having to throw on um, uh, an extender. So here's where you set up your dials your touch operation uh, to make sure it's on or off. Right now it's on. You can get in there and, and set your touch up. Your monitor brightness, all the things that you personalize your camera and how you like it. Display options, how you want your display to look. Power settings, so you know this is like, do you want your camera to automatically turn off after it's not been touched for a minute or two minutes, let's say. Okay, sound options, how you wanted to record audio signals. So audio signals, let's just do that one because this is one of those things that personally annoys me. You're somewhere and you see that photographer uh, shooting oops, and everything they touch is like bloop, 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 bloop. And so then you just go right here to off and you turn that off and it doesn't make that noise. Now, if you like that on, then keep it on. Um, your USB connections, your external outputs, uh, 
setup options. So that's it, we're back to the my menu setting. So as you can see, this wasn't, I didn't give you like a real deep dive into this. I wanted to just show you, it is a little bit different. And again, this is the very first time I'm looking at this menu and seeing it for myself. Uh, so I need to probably spend a little time, but uh, you know, of course, when you set up your camera, the first thing you're gonna set your time zones, you're gonna set your functions on how you use and you like the camera. But the nice thing about the A7S III is that the menu is a lot smarter it also allows you to uh, do a lot more things. As well as, let me just show you quickly too, which we didn't do. Let's go into the, let me go back to there. Let's go into the function menu. Um, and so this is the FN button on the back of the camera where you can control a lot of, uh, so this is, you know, it's set, this is the audio recording level. And it tells you what this is, focus modes. I like to shoot on continuous focus. Uh, this is your focus area you want to jump in here, whether you want wide, whether you want zone. You know, I like to keep it on zone or wide generally. Um, back to the FN button. Uh, picture profile. So if you want to shoot with a picture profile, I usually don't. These are your zebra displays. Uh, so you can set how much zebra you like, especially when you're shooting video, uh, basically showing you uh, you know, where your overexposures and underexposures are on. Um, uh, for your program, I generally shoot uh, either on manual and or um, program, depending on what I'm doing. There's, again, prioritize your media settings, steady shot on or off, your white balances. So these are all the stuff. And again, you can customize these functions to put whatever you want on, on the, the function menu. Um, so peaking level, peaking on and off, uh, that type of thing. And again, you can have a different, uh, there is a different function menu for whether you're in, uh, so that I was in movie mode. And then if you go to, let's just say program on the camera, and now I hit the function button then there's different settings for still. Uh, so again, that's autofocus, zone, um, you know, more things that you would go to for still than you would. Uh, so that's a great thing, like then it shows up. And again, uh, you know, going back to the menu really quick. then there's gonna be certain things in here that are grayed out that were, cause we were in video mode when we just did all that. So you get the picture. Um, you gotta go through it, you gotta play with it yourself, you gotta set it up for, uh, you know, what you like, I zoom in on myself. Um, but uh, I'm excited to really dig into it and play with it. I just wanted to show with you, show you what some of the functions were, uh, let you see it, let your whistle. Uh, today is the 22nd, so these cameras will be shipping in two days. Uh, so I know a lot of you have ordered this camera and will be playing with it. Um, and it's really gonna be exciting to see the flood of beautiful videos uh, and of course stills that are gonna come from the creators that get these cameras. I know we kind of went through this a little bit quickly, um, but if you do have any questions about the menu, please put them in the comments. I'm gonna spend a little more time with the camera and uh, talk to the powers of Sony that be that I can have access to. If I don't understand uh, and can't get you the answer, I will be able to get you the answer. So put your questions, your comments in the comment section below. And this is Robert Evans. Thanks for watching The Pixel Show.